Hello cool X, it's Pablo here and welcome back to Barca Universal. Following our defeat in El Clasico, Barcelona are straight back in La Liga action as we take on Rayo Vallecano away from home at Vallecas in La Liga for what should be another big test for Ronald Koeman's side. There's no doubt about that, especially in our current situation, guys. We know we've got to start winning matches, so this one should be another tough test for Barcelona. Without any further ado... Let's get started. And this one will be an away fixture for Barcelona. Actually, our first away fixture since the international break. Our last away game was that 2-0 defeat to Atletico Madrid. So this should be a big test, as I said. And it will, of course, be away at the Estadio de Vallecas. And actually, at 7pm local time in Spain. So watch out for that one, guys, so that you don't miss it. And I think certainly going away to Rayo, it's usually quite a hostile away fixture, is what I'd say, guys. It isn't really, you know, a pleasant away game, especially not with the fans back in the stadium. So I certainly am expecting quite the test here and right here is how the table looks coming into this game in La Liga and as you can see guys it, that really does you know tell you everything you need to know Rayo are currently above Barcelona in La Liga coming into this fixture and they know if they win they go four points above us so right now guys like I say that tells you everything you need to know we've got to win this game we have got to start winning matches full stop to be honest and anything other than a victory tomorrow would continue to leave us in a really really dangerous spot in La Liga and let's actually start here with Rayo, the home side for this fixture. And to be honest, guys, with Rayo, what I would say about them is that, in my opinion, they've probably been the surprise package of the season so far because Rayo actually only came up last season through the playoffs. They got a, an important win over Girona there in the playoff final. And I think probably most people expect them to be around the relegation zone this season. And you know what? It's still early, early days. We only played 10 games or whatnot, so they still could be there. But under young coach Andoni Iraola, they've been really, really impressive so far. And as you guys can see, you know, as, I, as I showed you earlier, they're above Barcelona they're doing really really well Rayo largely come up and play a four-back system not a five-back which a lot of promoted teams do they usually have quite a fair share of possession a lot of their games have been pretty 50 50 with their rivals and I think that has been demonstrated by the fact that Rayo are actually the second top scorers in La Liga behind only Real Madrid which just makes their start even more impressive in my opinion what I would say is that I am expecting Rayo to sit in a bit more against Barcelona it just feels like it's the natural thing to do for these sides but Certainly do not be surprised, guys, to see Rayo come out at home. If they want to press us, if they want to try and put our back line under as much pressure as possible, which I think they will, then don't be surprised to see Rayo, you know, go for us a bit here. I think they will feel, with their fans behind them in this sort of atmosphere, really, the fact that they're even above us on the table, they'll probably feel, hang on a minute, we can get a historic result here. And I think certainly also they'll be looking to bounce back from a weekend 3-2 defeat to Real Betis. Regarding who to look out for on the Real team, I think certainly attacking-wise, you've got the likes of Oscar Trejo, who's been in La Liga for quite some years now. Uh, you've got Ran Randy and Teca too, who's actually got a few goals under his belt. But also, guys, Radamel Falcao is part of Real's side. He was signed quite late in the summer transfer window, actually, and he should be in action in some form tomorrow. Usually, he's been used from the bench under Iraola so far this season, but he could start in tomorrow's fixture, so we will need to make sure that we keep a close eye on El Tigre. And now let's actually move on to ourselves in Barcelona, who of course do come into this game off the back of yet another classical defeat. And I think the classical defeat this time around was just another sad one, really. We just seemed like we didn't have enough to cause Real any sufficient problems. And that really probably hurt, I think, in terms of it's not that we were just shocking and not ran over. It's the fact that it was quite an even game, but we just seemed so incapable of really picking up a big result in it. And I suppose that kind of hurts. I think at least the fact that this game comes quite fast after the classical means that we haven't had too much time to dwell on it. You know, already we're back in action and actually guys we've got to wake up because we've got four fixtures before the international break here and I'm gonna say it now we need to win all four of them that's my opinion on, on it I, I think to be fair the team actually has improved since the international break I really do I think the fact that Laporta has supported Koeman has helped in that regard you know I think it's probably best if Laporta maybe makes the change with Koeman but the fact that he at least supported him has given the team a bit of stability and I honestly feel as if, if we play like we did against Real Madrid in our next four games we will pick up some positive results. I am convinced about that. We've got Rayo, then we've got Alaves, then we've got Dynamo Kiev, and then we've got Celta Vigo. All of that's coming before the international break. And in my opinion, like I said, we've got to be winning all four of those games. Now, whilst I do think we have been better after the international break, as I said, I do feel as if you know the team has improved in some aspects for sure. I think there are still the same issues that, that do remain. I think up front, we do look very feeble and quite unable to really spark 
any threat and that hurts. Uh, we're hearing that Aguero is again not ready to start, so he'll likely come off the bench. And even Ansel Fati now is a big doubt for this game. He probably won't start. He may not even travel. So it doesn't look like our attack is going to be getting any better, really. In midfield, we've also looked a bit lost, I think, in recent weeks. Gavi looks tired. Busquets, I still feel, plays a lot better with the national team than he does with Barcelona. And also, Frankie de Jong is now out for this fixture. So, Sergio Roberto is likely to step in in midfield. In defence, I honestly feel like we've improved. I think we've seen that. Look, we conceded a long shot to Valencia from a great guy at strike. We didn't concede to Dynamo Kiev. We looked a lot more stable in that game, at least, despite the fact we we weren't very good going forward. And then even against Real Madrid there, you know, we, we conceded a long range screamer to Alaba. And then the second goal, you know, the hit us on the counter attack. What can you do really? We could have defended it better. You know, individuals could have done better like Edgar Garcia, for example. But I honestly feel as if the defending has improved. However, against Rayo in this specific game, it will be a different sort of test. You know, Rayo are going to give us different problems. They're going to pose different threats. So we've got to be prepared for that sort of different approach. It's actually a sort of approach the defenders that Eddie Garcia could struggle with. So he's got a big test tomorrow. And let's see how he deals with that. Because moving on to team selection, I think this is the sort of thing I would be expecting in tomorrow's game. Let's go through it, guys. To Stegen, of course, will be there in goal. I'm expecting a 4-3-3 again with Jordi Alba at left back. I think Mingetha will get the nod at right back. I don't think he would have if it weren't if it wasn't for a few injuries. Piquet and Ed Garcia, I think, will start at centre back. In midfield, I think Roberto will just come in for De Jong there, next to Gavi and next to Busquets. And then up front, I think Dest is gonna have to play again at right wing because Aguero's not fit to start. Because Anisul Fati looks like he's going to be missing this game, Dembele still isn't back. And I don't think Yusuf Demid is going to be used. So that's why I put Dest there. And then, of course, that allows sort of room for Coutinho to come in next to Memphis to pie. Look, if Anisul's fit, if Aguero's fit, then they could come in and, you know, Coutinho and Mingetha could be taken out, for example. And you could mix and match the team a bit. But I think with the, with the, with the players we've got missing right now, there isn't really much room to manoeuvre. I think, again, we've got bad injury problems on top of the fact that Araujo's out, Dembele's still out, of course, Braithwaite's out, Pedri's out. You know, the injury situation right now isn't going well. So adding De Jong and Ansel Fati to that, it's not good news, but that's what we've got right now, guys. We've got to hope that they've got enough to produce. And of course, wrapping up with my score prediction, I've gone for quite an outlandish prediction. I've gone for Rayo 2, Barcelona 3. I don't know why. That was actually the score when we played away to Rayo in the 2018-19 season. Suarez got a late goal on that day. He scored in the first half too. So I suppose that has allowed me, you know, a small chance to get some Suarez propaganda in here at the end of the video. But anyway, 3-2. I feel like it could be that sort of game. If Rayo do come out a little bit, I kind of see them scoring. I don't know why. I feel like we're, we're due some goals. So let's see if we can get some guys. 3-2. Any win would do here, really, for Barcelona, let's be honest with ourselves. If we win the four games we've got before the international break, we'll be in a good spot. So let's see if we can do it, guys. We've got some really, really important games coming up. And this one away to Rayo, it's not going to be easy at all. They've been in good form this season, as we've seen. And away at Vallecas, that's a really, really hostile and hard game. So it's going to be difficult, especially with the players we've got missing, guys. You know, we can't rely on Ansel, for example. Even Dembele, Pedri, you know, crucial players. Frenkie de Jong, Araujo. Massive players for Barcelona missing again, so it's not ideal. We have got Aguero though, so hopefully he can get a goal off the bench at least. He is a you know dangerous, dangerous player, so if we feed him the ball, I'm hoping he can score. But that is where I'm going to end the preview. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I'll be getting back to all of you there, and goodbye.